For today's DIY, I wanted to bring a little wig play. I know I like versatility that the uh, that wigs give me, and I'm sure you guys do too. Whenever I want to change my look, or I just want to, you know, channel my other inner beauty, or you know, just be a little playful. I like to dabble in uh, different wigs, different styles, different textures, different colors. And so today I'm going to show you how you can make your own wig. And the reason why I chose this particular wig is because it's going to be pretty easy to make because we are using um, this 360 degree frontal. As you can see, this frontal already comes on a cap. So this is like lace all around, as you can see, look at that. You can open it any way you want and you can see scalp so that's going to be very useful uh, for us and it already includes a cap that's sewn on so you don't have to worry about going to purchase a different cap and trying to sew it on or dealing with that whole three um the one 180 degree lace the 13 by 6 because you the 13 by 6 for you to be able to lay it it's going to take a lot of practice and i know that you guys want to save money and i know that you guys want this is as easy as possible and this will make it as easy as possible for you to make it this is guys i don't even know why they didn't just come up come out with the 360 before they even tried to play around in that 13 by 6 nonsense because that thing is tough to lay you kind of have to really know what you're doing so this one is going to make it super super easy so i'm going to show you how you would sew the wig on and then at the end i'll show you how it looks when you're rocking it all right so stay tuned let's get started so you would obviously need uh the hair that you'll be putting uh, in the middle where there isn't any hair and then you would need your thread and uh, you can do a straight needle or a, cur a curved needle whichever one works easier for you and some type of wig head or <laughs> you know if your boo or somebody would sit and allow you to sew the wig on their head hey you know whatever works <laughs> do what you need to do to make this as easy for yourself as possible and one other thing that i the reason why i really like the 360 frontal is because you measure your head beforehand and you can actually get the wig uh customized for you so they come in small medium and large and according to where your uh the circumference of your head falls so you just measure right around here according to where the circumference of your head falls is the size that you would order so you already know that it's going to fit it's not going to be a problem you can sew it down if you want to or you can um, take it off at night and be able to wash your hair condition your hair you know exercise without the whole thing starting to stink so this is going to be super easy so what I've done here is I've just started with a styrofoam head as you can see and I just, I didn't have any of those T-pins for uh, clipping onto your wigs, onto the styrofoam head. And so I just used regular pins. Can you see? So I just stuck those on just to keep the wig uh, taut so that I can start sewing from the back. So this is the back of the head. And guys, what you want to do is you want to start sewing as close as possible to the to where that uh, uh, that frontal hair ends so just start sewing as close as possible in sort of like a smiley like a smiley mouth right so you see just like that that is how we're going to start sewing our hair
and I don't always go through the weft. Just in the beginning, I'll go through the weft to secure it. And you can see it makes it quite difficult for the needle to come through, but that's just the beginning. And then as I go forward, I'll just go right underneath where the weft is. Guys, there is no need to like punish yourself and try to sew through the weft because <laughs> it's so tight in there. Like you would have to be like literally dragging the needle with your teeth. It ain't nobody got time for that, okay? So just go right under where they've sewn the weft and you just sort of follow that smiley mouth. and just because the reason why we want to sew real close to the where the other hair ends is that when you put it in a in a bun you don't want there to be a gap between uh the tracks and where the uh, the, the frontal ends in the back because otherwise you'll be able to to see that there's like a, a gap where there's no hair and you that is not the right look okay <laughs> So I just keep sewing real close. And just turn, turn where it starts to turn. And guys, we're not doing any uh, customizations yet. After our wig is completely done, that's when I'll show you how to customize it in a very, very easy way. So now that we've kind of got into the same spot from this side and the same as here, if you want, you can go ahead and just turn the hair if you don't want to cut the wefts, 
you will just turn the hair right here and do what is called the fold over method and where you just try to lay the hair down as tightly as possible as you can see here I just folded the hair down and just stitch it and go back the other way I'll just stitch this part like a couple of times just to ensure that it's not going to be bulky so that when your hair is up nobody will be able to you know see the lumps because there won't be any right so that's the purpose of that fold over method and so that your hair won't start shedding if sometimes if you cut the wefts you may start shed, shedding uh, on the ends because there's nothing to hold it anymore unless you go back in and kind of glue those ends down again which I mean sometimes I do that when I don't have time honey so now we just go back the other way And just keeps sewing in that <laughs> smiley smiley emoticon right there that smiley mouth shape And guys, just depending on how much, like how big you want your hair, you can put, I usually would, if I'm using a, a 360 like this, just two bundles is enough, guys. So guys, this is where I am now, just keep going. And as you start to get to the top, you want to start straightening out that smiley so that it's not so curved and just make sure to leave a bit of space in between the tracks so for space this is about how much I leave between so I'd say like maybe like a half an inch in between each track because I promise you guys it's gonna be enough hair you don't want it to be like you know the whole china factory or the whole indian factory like threw up on your head and at the same time you want it to be a nice balance to where it's it's not like you got three hairs on there either so i found that that amount of space is usually pretty it's it, it's good enough to where i still have like nice hair but it's not like bouffant so again just turn so I don't have to cut the track and and like I said just leave that like half inch or a little bit less than half an inch in between the tracks and just keep sewing and this uh, styrofoam head guys I just bought it from the uh, beauty supply store then it was like three dollars and I guess the reason why I like to use it is that it's easy to manipulate you can kind of hold it between your legs if you want or you know you can lay uh, sideways whatever makes it a little bit easier for you to sew and this is what I was saying don't go 
in between where they've sewn the track like right there just go on un right under it and just keep going And when I'm running out of thread, what I just do is, as you can see, the thread is really little that's left now. I just coil it around the needle as the needle is coming out, just so it will loop and make a knot around itself so that it's not going to come off easily because I'm going to have to break it off soon and, and put uh, a new thread on. So again, just wrap a couple of times nothing major and just snip off the excess and you can start a new thread And I like to double up my thread. It just makes it easier and this, uh, the thread doesn't tangle as much as if you try to do like one, one end loose and you know just sew with one thread. Even though the thread will go a longer way, it will make it really difficult to, to sew. So then I just pick up again. I just uh, made a knot at the end of the thread so it doesn't come out and when I pick up again just pass it through See, I think it's knotted somewhere. There we go. So guys, here she is. Completed. And this is my last line. Can you see? Try to get your last line as close as possible to where the frontal ends so i didn't leave not even like a millimeter i just put it like butted it right up against so that when your hair is like this you're not going to see any weirdness right because the point is that you'll be able to like tie this up into a ponytail with no problems so all around will just be looking good. So now I'll just remove the pins and just cut off the excess lace and uh, just follow the uh, pre-twisted hairline 
that this frontal came with so I don't have to do a lot of tweezing to customize it as you can see the edge is kind of you know it gra gradually has more hair just like a natural hairline so I'll just follow along and trim that excess lace off and I'll show you what she looks like and guys it does come um, with an adjuster in the back but I measured my head and my circumference is 21.5 so that's the small cap and it fits perfectly so I, do, I won't even need to use that and I got this hair from uh, Chris my hair Crisma. So I'll just trim the excess lace and then I'll come back wearing it so you can see how she looks. And the lace is kind of light brown but I think like I may have to tint it and uh, for the tint all you have to do is to just boil of uh, make a cup of like strong tea and then you just soak the the lace in the tea so just put your wig in a in a like white ball and pour the tea over it and just let it sit in the tea and it will gradually get browner and browner the longer you leave it in there. So once you reach your desired uh, color of lace, then you can just take it out. Or another way to do it would just be to use your foundation to pat right under the wig. That way it kind of takes on the color of your face so you won't be able to notice where the wig starts and like your hairline uh, ends so there's a lot of ways to skin a cat whatever is easiest for you you can just do that and guys just make sure you don't cut any of the hairs off but if you do I mean it's okay if you want baby hairs I can show you in a different video how to create the baby hairs but I don't think I'll really need much of those on this particular unit I think it already has some you see this shorter hairs that they trimmed a little bit shorter than the rest you can kind of slick those down with gel if you want just to really hide more of the lace And of course, once you put it on your head, you may have to trim off a little bit more excess just to suit your particular hairline because obviously this is uh, generic what they just <laughs> thinking a hairline might look like. But I mean, most of the work is, the hard work is already done for you. And if you want to bleach the knots, you can as well but I don't think I will need to that's a little bit more work if you really want to
so here it is guys that's all the hair that I just had to put in the middle part there so you can see it's not too much and the rest is just the lace so you have I believe four or five inches in the front this is the front where there's more lace and then this is the back with about two inches of lace but that's the finished product and next time I'll show you what it looks like on